Have you found that yet? Gospel of John, chapter 1. In uh, John, chapter 1, we read this. This is uh, an emphasis. Of make, you know, I make around Christmas every year, but also but it's something that we need to hear. And starting, you know, the, verse 1, chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word, the living Word, and the Word was, uh, was with God, and the Word was God. And notice that the Word, all things were made through Him. All things were made through Him, the Word, the living Word. All things were not only made through Him, but in Him, the living Word is life. And that life from the living Word is light. And that light shines in the darkness. Every dark place in us, the light is shining if we will expose ourselves to the Word. And even if we don't, the Spirit of God is still speaking and convicting and drawing us to come to the living Word so that the Word can shine into our dark areas. Not only the darkness of the world, but also in every dark place within us, every place that um, we may still be holding on to or things of the old holding on to us. And this is something that we have to really, really understand today is that, that the Word of God is applied to the new you, the new person we have become in Jesus. The Word does not apply to the old. So stop trying to get the Word to fix your old life. We're to lose our old life. Just what Jesus said. He said, you lose your old life. I've come to give you new life. I've come to give you eternal life, abundant life. So don't drag your old self in front of God and say, okay, God, fix it. Leave it. That's what he told us to do. Die to yourself. Get rid of that old. Stop trying to fix it because the Word who is God, the living Word, comes with life and light to shine in each of us to show us. Number one, one of the things it would show us was how much of the old we're holding on to, but also the light shows us what the new has become, who we are in Christ Jesus. That's probably the primary shining focus of the Word of Jesus in our life is to show us who we are, who we have become in Him. I repeat, I saw, I saw a sign, they still got it up. Jesus is, will solve all your problems or can solve all your problems, something like that. And, uh, and I, every time I read it, I say, that's a, you know, not a, Jesus is going to cause you a lot of problems. <laughs> It's going to cause you a lot of problems if you try to hold on to the old. If you try to hold on to the world, if you don't really enter into the kingdom and the rule and reign of Jesus, Jesus is going to cause you a lot of problems because lukewarmness halfway between always makes God sick and makes us sick and makes the world sick. Do we understand that? Lukewarmness. Causes the Lord to be sick with it. Causes us to be sick with it. And guess what? The world is turned off to it and sick of it too. They will not turn off genuine power and the presence of Jesus unless they just wickedly want to turn from God. People are looking for the true light and the light has come. When Jesus was born into the earth, the angels rejoiced. There was great glory, glorious light from heaven was shining into the earth. Symbolism announcing light has come. Salvation has come. A new dominion has come. A kingdom has come. God is doing this in the earth. And it's obvious and it's, and it's physical and it's spiritual, it's emotional. There's a kingdom and a way of living now that God is introducing into the earth that's, that has been held back till this time. And now God himself steps into the earth in a man called Jesus. And he comes to give us life and light 
to shine in every dark place. And he says, he shines in the darkness. That's it. You know, you can't keep him from doing that. He shines in darkness. You know, I know that's the reason that a lot of people avoid reading the Bible. That's the reason a lot of people avoid the living word because Jesus said it, they know their deeds are evil and they avoid the light. But those who come to the light love him. This is not a discipline that you're to uh, create in your life. That's a religious term, a church term. Did you feel like, well, I've got to, I have certain disciplines I've got to put in my life. You don't have to put this in your new life. You have to try to discipline your old life, but your new life lives like this. <laughs> I just said, you better hear this. We all need to hear this. The new life in Christ Jesus longs to worship in, in spirit and in truth, longs for the living word, longs for companionship and fellowship with Jesus, longs to worship. The old doesn't want to do any of that. So maybe if we would be real honest with ourselves, we're not struggling with the devil. We're struggling with our old self instead of dying to it. Jesus came to give us a new life. Much more than forgiveness, by the way. Much more. Verse 14 of John says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is, that, that Jesus living in a flesh and blood body, knows exactly what it's like to be living in a flesh and blood body. As I said last week, you're, you are not your body. One day we're going to put this body off, but you and I are going to continue to live. Did everybody hear that? You're gonna, the real you is one day is going to leave your body and your body is going to go back to dust. My, my body is going to go back to dust but the real eternal you is going to keep living. And Jesus, God in the flesh, just like this word became flesh, he knows what it's like to be in our a flesh and blood body. He knows what it's like to want to need sleep and to be hungry. I don't, well, okay. <laughs> and it says, we beheld his glory. What, what, again, get back to this. Think about this. Hear this. When, when he came in the flesh and blood, blood it says, we beheld his glory. What, what is glory? Glory is the manifest presence of the Lord. The devil doesn't have glory. The world really doesn't have any glory. It has a manifestation, but glory only belongs to God. Because it's a manifestation of the goodness of, the, of, of God himself. The goodness of God. The righteousness of God. The world and the devil, they don't have any kind of uh, righteousness or goodness in it. But it has a certain amount of, the way it's translated in the English, uh, the devil said to Jesus, I'll give you their glory. I'm going to give you their their applause and of you know acceptance and your people in this who are lost who are going to approve of you and you're going to get get your ego built up and they're going to they're going to really like being around you and all. he said I'll, I'll give that to you and that's what many people are trading for the presence of God John said we saw his glory we saw the glory of God we saw the goodness, eternal righteousness, and the very good things of God himself. We saw it in this man, Jesus. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Begotten, you know, sometimes people struggle with that. I thought, I thought well, what does that begotten mean? It means to bring into existence. To bring into existence. And that the Father brought into existence Jesus as a man in a flesh and blood body in the earth because we were the ones lost in sin. We were the ones lost from the fellowship and 
dominion of the Father. So Jesus came to restore that. John, still in John chapter 3, talks about verse 15 that he who believes in him should not perish. He who believes in him should not perish. And understanding what really believing is, believing is to live in fellowship with the Spirit and walking in truth. It's not a mental exercise or or acceptance of a teaching or a philosophy or a doctrine. It is fellowship with the in the Spirit, walking in truth. That's what believing is, scripturally. To the world, believing is something else. I can, in the world, I can believe in certain things and have nothing to do with it. I, can, I believe in that chair, but I'm not sitting in it. A lot of people believe in Jesus, but they're not involved with him. They're not in fellowship with him. They're not walking with him because they've bought the lie that just believing in in that kind of believing according to the world is is, is what the Bible is talking about. The Bible, when it talks about believing, it talks about being in fellowship, being in union with with the Lord God himself in being joined to Jesus. You know, just like you who are, you believe in the chair, but you're sitting in it. (laughs) <laughs> to believe in Jesus is to be in him and the word being in us and we're walking in that lifestyle and it has very little to do with emotions very little to do with how you feel because the power of God is released when we believe the word the living word. Some people are trying try to get feeling spiritual all the time. The church itself has lost itself in trying to be spiritual and creating a false sense of humiliation and false sense of being spiritual and feeling the anointing. They've, the church has lost itself trying to create that atmosphere that doesn't even exist in the kingdom of God. It only exists in in the theatrics that men and people come up with. It's like a Hollywood, you know, special effects that when we're in the spirit, oh, now we got this special aura about ourselves. We got this special feeling that we have. We got this special power now because it's kind of like a, you know, special effects, and we become superheroes, and then we go back to our secret hidden identity, and then we come to kind of normal people, but then certain things come out. We got a superhero. How many hear what I'm saying? All that is illusion. It's a lie. That's not what the kingdom of God is or about. The kingdom of God is the word, the living word, being in us, and we being in him, and we're being in that fellowship, walk in the truth. Peter and John went to pray. There's a lame man they prayed for. And he got up and walked and leaped and was dancing and praising God in the temple. And, and uh, of course, people started looking. And, and Peter said, listen, why do you look at us if it's by, as if by our holiness we made the man whole? It's not us. It's not our holiness. See, that doesn't fit in with modern church. Because we've got people who want to be that holy person who's, who's making all this happen. But the thing is, we've got congregations who want that. They want to be entertained. As long as somebody else is carrying the burden and the power, I can go and watch and feel good and then just go home and be who I am anyway. It's a lie. It's a deception. And God is telling us truth so that we'd wake up out of our darkness. Okay. God has brought something into existence. 
If you believe in him, you should not perish. If you truly receive his grace and his truth, when we come before him, what does Hebrews 4.12 says? The word of God is living. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intent of our heart. That's Jesus living in us. Every day, Jesus is with us. If he's in us, if we're really saved, he is with us. But it's not that he shows up every morning. He is in me while I'm asleep. <laughs> he, is, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm always with you. And his spirit is always with us. We'll never perish. But if we truly, truly receive, we understand that nothing is hidden from the living word because it shines into every dark place. And we should welcome that. A true believer with humility says, Lord, shine your light into me. Heal me. Make me well in every area. Not, on, not just show me bad stuff because it, it, it does that as an incidental thing. How does it show us bad things as incidental? Because it shows us the right thing. And when we see the right thing, we automatically know that the bad, what the bad thing is. The Word searches us. It gets, he, live, he lives in us. Word, flesh, He is sharp. He discerns our thoughts and our intents of a heart. He does. And we have to be honest enough to let that discernment take place in us. That way we, we step into life. We step into abundant life. We step into eternal life. Because he shows us what eternal life is. And as we step into eternal life, it's like a sieve. Some, some of you don't know what a sieve is. Like a sifter. A sifter. Some of us old enough to remember what a sifter is. They, that mama used to use them. They'd put stuff in it and... And uh, either some of them had a, some of them had a turn hand, a crank on it. And, you'd, and what it would do, you'd take the flour or whatever was in the sifter and you'd turn it over and over and over and it would, be, it would go through what is called the sieve, the little holes, and, all, and the good stuff would be in the bowl and the bad stuff, throw it, in the, throw it out. And the Word of God puts us into that sieve. That's what, what he said that John said he, he, he is bringing his wheat to the threshing floor. He's putting his we, his people, his people that are called to him. He puts us into that seed, and he, he's taking out the bad, and, but he's amplifying and renewing, refreshing the new in him that we are. Abundant life. And we're to take hold of that abundant life. Stop falling for this lie that says, oh, it's so hard to live for Jesus. It is not hard to live for Jesus. It is the normal for the new man. It is hard, impossible for the old man to act like it's Christian. If you're struggling with something, saying, I'm having a hard time with this, take it to the cross, die to it, leave it alone. Stop demanding it. Stop trying to make it live because it's supposed to be dead. <laughs> See, some of us need to get rid of some old attitudes and feelings, thought patterns, conduct. Step into the new. Jesus came in flesh so that to show us what the new is like. See, the announcement of the angel to Joseph, said, you shall call his name Emmanuel, which being translated means what? God is with us. If we, all, if we got that revelation, it would change everything. God is with us. <laughs> Religion keeps telling you 
Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah but, the, but the world's there and the devil. You see, the focus of the old is always that. Always the wrong, always the accept, always the bad, always the, oh, what about this? Why? That's the old life it's trying to stay alive in you. And we're supposed to lose that, crucified on the cross, die to that, let go of it, quit trying to revive it, and embrace the new that God has made us in Christ Jesus. That's what Christmas is about. Christmas is about God coming in a flesh and blood body to join us back to himself. That we would be joined to the Lord, not just believe in him, in the like secular natural wisdom, I believe in the existence of something. But to believe in him, it means to be joined to him. Joined to Jesus. Real salvation is living a life that is joined to Jesus. Living a life joined to the life of God. And letting the new come alive. Letting the new come alive. And if you're saying, but, oh, you know, the old sip, because you're you letting it hang around. We're letting it hang around. If all, we're focused on, oh, the old man still trying to do this, the old world. Because everybody understands that if you're in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. Old things are passed away. Period. New things become. It's got to start growing, and you got to start participating in it, and walking in it, and enjoying the fellowship with it. And you, the new you in Christ Jesus, gets bigger and better, being renewed day by day by the Spirit of God as we walk in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and walking in truth. God has brought this type of life into existence. God brings it into existence. Begotten of God means that God brought this into existence. It's not of ourselves. That's what Ephesians says, that we're saved by grace through faith. That not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. But see, again, it seems like we're just stuck in this place. Oh, well, I got, it. I got the gift of God, well, but we keep trying to make it work in the old, and we're supposed to lose ourselves for his sake in the gospel. That's what the kingdom is about. What you were, you are not anymore. If you'll take up the new, put on the new person. I've had people talk to me about, well, you know, I just got to, um, yeah, that's what people don't understand. Because when I talk to people about knowing Jesus and walking with the Lord, they'll say, yeah, I've, asked, <laughs> I've asked people, that, you know, what, the, what are their responses to me? Well, I'm working on it. You don't work on this. What that actually is saying, if you'd understand what you're saying when a person says, I'm working on it, is that you're still trying to make the old work, and it won't. you got to start living in the new and increasing in the presence of God, increasing in the living word. Jesus said that if you'd believe in him, you should not perish. You believe in the person. Believe in the person. Not, not just believe in a book called the Bible. There's a lot of religious people that believe in the Bible, but they don't believe in the person that the Bible actually reveals. Oh, they can proof text you. Oh, some people are really good at that. They try to box you in with scriptures. Don't fall for that. Don't, I know it's, it's difficult when people try to do that. And they, they, they'll quote scripture and try to do this and try to box you in on doctrines and everything else. If you are living in the fellowship of Jesus, by the way, you don't have to know everything. Just know him. 
and keep increasing because he will give you wisdom and understanding as you continue and this fellowship with him because that's what we had before the fall of man. Man had fellowship with the Father and the Father was giving Adam, male and female, wisdom. That brings in another area, but he, didn't got, he did not create Adam and Eve. Everybody, has anybody ever heard that God created Adam and Eve? Y'all have heard that? He didn't create Adam and Eve. He created Adam. She didn't become Eve till she stepped out in disobedience against the word and brought him along. Created the separation not only between God and them, but between each other. And the world has been suffering ever since. Jesus will heal that if we will turn to him, that we would be saved. We would be saved. We would be saved. That's much more than being forgiven of our sin. Because see, hear this. The scripture teaches this. The, he has died that the, all sin, all sin has been paid for in all the world, in all of creation. All sin has been covered by his blood and paid for and the power of it broken to those who receive him. See, the pitiful thing is, and sad thing is, is that people's sins are forgiven, but they don't receive that. They'd rather stay in their old self. But those who receive him, the living word, become children of God, have the authority to become and be walking in fellowship. Jesus, very quickly, let me touch on this, is that, that in him, God has so loved the world that he gave his son, he brought him into existence, that whoever believes in him, that is, they, they attach themselves, they join themselves to this person of Yeshua, Jesus, truly born of the Spirit, not of ourselves, but of him. We're not condemned, but... To be saved. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they don't make the choice of receiving and joining their life to Jesus. And again, what does the religious world do? You've got to please hear this and check your heart. Religious world say they believe in Jesus, but they never join themselves to Jesus. And when you join yourself to Jesus, then you get put in that sifter and, and things start being churned up and changed because God is getting rid of the roots of old stuff that's been destroying you your whole life. But you know, it's amazing how many people are holding on to stuff that's killing them. Uh, well, okay. Okay. <laughs> He said, those who uh, believe, they come to the light because the light's shining. He says, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Eve, everybody living in evil, practicing evil, hates the light. They hate the light. They don't come to the light. Please hear this. They don't come to the light. They don't read the Bible. They don't come to church. They don't worship God. They don't change their adapt this new life to start following Jesus because they hate the light. That's what the Word says. You may say, well, preacher, you may offend me. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm trying to help you get you out of darkness. The, the Word said, if you don't come to the light, you hate the light. 
Okay. But if you do the truth, he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be shown that they're in God. That's what real Christmas is about. God coming to us, word becoming flesh, giving us light, life, delivering us from darkness, put a new creation in us, making us new people, but we got to put off that old and we keep coming to the light. We got to keep coming, got to keep seeking so that the Spirit of the Lord is in us and the motivation and intent of our life is to live in truth and walk in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Does, does anybody know what all that's about? No. Beware of people who feel like they know everything because only fools think they know everything. Wise people know that we don't know everything. Okay? Now, are you joined to Jesus? That's the, that's the question. Are you joined to Jesus? That if you believe in him, you should not perish. Join yourself to Jesus. Let the life of God live in you by receiving Jesus. As, he was the announcement. He was the announcement. God with us. He was the announcement. This is what it's like for God to be in a man. This is what it's like. And we can have that by his spirit coming to live in us. If we're willing to put off the old, old attitudes, old outlook, Let me see if I can find, I know I said I'd, uh, let me read to you a statement I heard. The lack, everybody listen, the lack of seeing comes from a predetermined view. Therefore, don't receive. The lack of seeing comes from a predetermined view. Therefore, you can't see what is being said, the new. The old saying, my mind's made up, don't confuse me with the facts. The truth has come to make us free and whole. Put on the new person. Put on the new person. Every day, right now, put on the new person. Even in a few seconds when we begin to interact with one another, put on the new self. Walking in the Spirit. Okay? Let's stand up, please. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you today for your great mercy and kindness that the glory of God, full of grace and full of truth, was revealed in Jesus. Lord, today I pray that each one will receive him, that we become new creations because he is in us now. We've humbled ourselves and we submit ourselves to you and receive your life, your forgiveness, but eternal life in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus I pray. Amen.